I'm Avner Kreps. I'm Eric No. And our project is entitled Markov Chains in Tennis. The goal of our project was to find what percentage of each tennis ground stroke ended up as a forehand cross court, a forehand down the line, a backhand cross court, and a backhand down the line. We collected data from 24 games of tennis, 12 from a gun varsity match featuring senior Amea Rao against freshman Jake Chuagozani, and 12 from the 2012 Australian Open Finals featuring Spaniard Rafael Nadal against Serb Novak Djokovic. After charting every ground stroke, we put our data into a Markov chain transition matrix. For example, here's the transition matrix representing Amea. FXC represents forehand cross court, FDTL represents forehand down the line, and BXC and BDTL represent their backhand counterparts. So since row 1 column 1 has a value of 0.587, 58.7% of Amea's cross court forehands were followed up by a subsequent cross court forehand. Note how high the values in the first column are relative to the other columns. This shows that more cross-court forehands were hit than any other shot. Also note the low values in the fourth column, which signify that not many backhands down the line were hit. Here is the transition matrix for Jake. As you can see, the values in column 1 are a lot higher than the others, and values in column 4 are much lower than the others. This shows an abundance of cross-court forehands being hit and a dearth of down-the-line backhands. Now, let's look at the transition matrix for Rafael Nadal. Compare it to the previous two. In comparison, the numbers in all the columns are a lot more even. No one column has much larger values than all the other columns, and this shows a higher diversity of shots that are being hit. Here is Djokovic's transition matrix. Once again, all the columns are have barely even values, especially as compared to the uh, two gun players' matrices. Shown are the equilibrium matrices for the two gun players, and these matrices were obtained by raising the power of each of the transition matrices by a large number. Uh, and the matrices appear fairly similar, especially the number for cross-court forehands, with the difference of only one one-thousandth between the two competitors. This is because, as both the players were right-handed, they tended to just rally using their cross-court forehand, which is thought of as a safest shot in tennis, due to the added amount of court to hit into as opposed to a down-the-line shot, and the relative ease of a forehand as opposed to a backhand. Now, as you can see, the equilibrium matrices for the two professional players are also pretty similar. One difference is the disparity in between the percentage of cross-court forehands of the two. This is explained by the fact that Nadal is left-handed. Because Nadal is left-handed, his forehand cross-court goes to Djokovic's backhand rather than his forehand, which would be the case if the players were both right or left-handed. Finally, here is the equilibrium matrix for the two gun players combined and one for the two pro players combined. The main difference is that the pro players are required to hit many more backhands uh, these are more complex shots than forehands, and so pro players are more adept at making their opponents hit backhands. And plus, pro players are more confident in their backhands than high school players, so they are not as liable to move around their backhands to hit a forehand. In summary, pro players hit a much wider array of shots than high school players do. Thanks for listening.